Uh, welcome to today's teaching. Today we will continue to look into the story of the, the patriarchs Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And how God laid the foundation for his plan of salvation. God spoke to Abraham and promised him that he would be a blessing to the whole world. This was actually the beginning of, of God working out his salvation plan. And God made a covenant with Abraham. Uh, Ibrahim, where he also promised him that uh, that in uh, in his seed after him that means his descendants after him God would make a people and that God would use that people as let's say as a platform and through that God would send the Savior to the world. And so this, this fantastic promise would be fulfilled. Which literally was that in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. But God also promised Abraham that he would be a father to many people. And that was fulfilled because Abraham actually had several sons. First, he had a son with the slave woman in the family called Hagar. Hagar. And then the Bible says that after that Sarah, his wife, had died, Abraham remarried. And that he got several sons with his new wife. And the Bible also tells that each one of them became the starting point to a, to a new tribe or to a new people. So in that way, God fulfilled his promise to Abraham that he would be a father to many people or many nations. But the fact is that Abraham only had one son together with his wedded wife, Sarah. إبراهيم كان عنده ولد واحد من خلال زوجته الأولى اللي إجا منها الوعد. And and obviously something was wrong in her body because throughout their whole life together she couldn't conceive. بالطبع كان عندها شيء فيزيولوجي غريب أو غير طبيعي إنه ما سمح لها إنه تنجب أولاد. And still God gave the the specific promise that you will have a son with your wife and that son will be your heir. So finally, when they were at an old age, Sarah got pregnant because of, of, a, of a miracle of God. God did some kind of healing in her body. And she conceived. And she bore this son. Who was named Isaac. So it was through Isaac. That God confirmed this promise. That it was through Isaac. This people will come. 
and uh, we'll go to the book of Genesis. ولو رجحنا لسفر التكوين في العهد القديم. And chapter 26. وإصحاح 26. And we'll read about when God met with Isaac when he was a grown-up man. ومنشوف لما الرب يعني التقى بإسحاق. And how God confirmed to him this promise and this covenant that God has made with Abraham now was inherited by Isaac. So I read from Genesis chapter 26. And, and the first five verses. It says, now there was a famine in the land. But besides the former famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Gerar to Abimelech, the king of the Philistines. And the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Dwell in the land of which I shall tell you. فظهر له الرب قائلا لا تمضي إلى مصر بل امكث في الأرض التي أعينها لك. Sojourn in this land and I will be with you and will bless you. For to you and to your offspring I will give all these lands and I will establish the oath that I swore to Abraham your father. أكم في هذه الأرض فأكون معك وأباركك لأنني أعطي لك ولذريتك جميع هذه الأرض وفاء بقسم الذي أقسمت لإبراهيم أبيك. I will multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and will give to your offspring all these lands and in your offspring all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. وأكثر ذريتك كنجوم السماء وأهبها جميع هذه البلاد. وتتبارك في نسلك جميع أمم الأرض. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. لأن إبراهيم أطاع قولي وحافظ أوامري ووصاياي وفرائدي وشرائعي. So as I said, even if the Bible said that that Abraham actually had many sons, رغم أن إبراهيم كان عنده عدة أولاد, he only had one son with his wedded wife from the youth. And we see here that, that God, God said to, to Isaac that it is through you that, this, that this, this promise and this covenant goes on. أنه من خلال الابن الوحيد اللي هو إسحاق سينجب النسل. And we'll also see that in the Bible, Isaac really stands as a, as a foreshadow of, of, of Jesus Christ. وفي الكتاب المقدس إسحاق هو يشبه شخصية المسيح. We look into a particular uh, thing that happened one time in the life of Abraham. وفي حادثة حصلت في حياة إبراهيم تفسر هذا القصد. And we find this story in Genesis chapter 22. لو رحنا نحن ل في تكوين إصحاح 22. And I'll read first from the beginning of the chapter and the first three verses. لو نقرأ أول ثلاث أعداد من إصحاح 22. It says, after these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. وبعد هذا امتحن الله إبراهيم فناداه يا إبراهيم فأجابه لبيك. He said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. خذ ابنك وحيدك إسحاق الذي تحبه وانطلق إلى أرض المرية وقدمه محرقة على أحد الجبال التي أهديك إليه. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. فاستيقظ إبراهيم مبكرا في الصباح التالي وأسرج حماره وأخذ اثنين من غلمانه وابنه إسحاق وجهز حطبا لمحركة وانطلق ماضيا إلى الموضع الذي قال له الله عنه. 
This is actually a very unique story in the Bible. هذه قصة مميزة في الكتاب المقدس. Because God has never ever asked for human sacrifices. لأنه قبل هذه الحادثة أبدا ما طلب الله من أي إنسان آخر أن يقدم ابن كذبيحة. And really, it was not like that in this case either. وحتى في هذه القصة يعني مش أصد الرب إنه يقتل الابن. Because it says that the, the purpose was that God tested Abraham. لكن الهدف هو أن كان من هذا أنه يمتحن الله إبراهيم. Because Abraham had entered into a covenant with God. لأن إبراهيم دخل في معاهدة قسم بينه وبين الله. And it's obvious for everyone that God could keep His covenant faithfully to anyone. وبالطبع أنه الله كان دائما حيلتزم بوعده ومش حيكسر هذا الوعد. But could Abraham keep the covenant to God? لكن هل كان بإمكان إبراهيم أن يوفي ويلتزم بهذه المعاهدة؟ And a, a covenant is an agreement. والمعاهدة هي اتفاقية. But it's also a commitment. لكنها هي التزام. Where Uh, where everything I have and all my resources. وهي تقول إنه كل ما لدي وكل كل يعني الأمور اللي عندي are at the disposal for the person that I am in covenant with. أقدمها وأهديها للشخص الثاني اللي عملت معه المعاهدة. And this is what Abraham knew. وهذا الشيء اللي فهمه إبراهيم. No matter how hard this must have struck his heart. مهما كان هذا الأمر صعب بالنسبة إله. He knew that God had the right to ask just anything from him. كان إبراهيم عارف إنه الله عنده القدرة أن يسأل أي شيء من إبراهيم ويجب أن إبراهيم أن يلتزم بهذه أن يطيع الرب. And for Abraham, this would this would be the the app. Absolute ultimate sacrifice. وبالنسبة لإبراهيم هذا كان أعظم تضحية كان ممكن يقدمها. This was the most dear thing he ever had. وهذا كان أغلى شيء كان كان عنده يحتفظ فيه. I think he gladly would have given his own life rather than his son. وأنا كان بفتكر إنه إبراهيم كان مستعد أن يقدم نفسه عوض عن ابنه. So when God asked for Isaac, فعندما طلب الله إسحاق, he asked for the dearest thing. طلب منه أعز شيء على قلب إبراهيم. And he asked for the most difficult thing for Abraham to give up. و وطلب أصعب شيء كان ممكن إبراهيم يتخلى عنه. And if Abraham would prove willing to do this, ولو كان إبراهيم مستعد إنه يقدم هذه التضحية, he would stand the test. حيكون نجح في الامتحان. He would prove to be a worthy covenant partner with God. وسيكون مؤهل وأهل أن يكون شريك في المعاهدة مع الله. And so at this time. The Bible says that the, the, they were living in a place called Beersheba. وفي هذا الوقت كان إبراهيم ساكن في مدينة أو في منطقة اسمها Beersheba, which was at the southern part of the land of Canaan. Beersheba, اللي هي كان في الجزء الجنوبي من من أرض إسرائيل. And God told him to go to Moriah. والرب طلب منه أن يذهب إلى جبل المريا. And so they went there. فذهبوا مع بعض. And when they came to the place, and when they came to the place where they were going to meet with the Lord, Abraham said to the young men that were accompanying them, "Abraham, tell them to the men who were with him, 'Wait here for us. I and the boy will go up and worship. I and the boy will go up and worship. I and the boy will go up and worship. I and the boy will go up and worship. I and the boy will go up and worship. I and the boy will go up and worship. I and the boy will go up and worship. You see, Abraham is the first person in the Bible that believes in a resurrection. Abraham هو أول إنسان مذكور في الكتاب المقدس كان يؤمن بشيء اسمه القيامة. Because he knew on one side that God had the right to ask just anything from him. كان عالم إنه الله عنده الحق أن يطلب منه أي شيء. But on the other hand, he also knew that it is, God has promised that it is through Isaac that seed will be called after you. لكن من نفس الوقت كان إبراهيم متأكد إنه الله سيتمم وعده أنه من خلال إب إسحاق ابن إسحاق سيتمم جلب النسل. And Abraham knew that it would be impossible that God would lie. وكان إبراهيم متأكد إنه الله لا يمكن أن يكذب. So in his mind, he thought. لكن في ذهنه كان مفكر that even if I put him on the altar إنه حتى لو أدم ابنه ذبيحة على المحرقة and even if I give him as a sacrifice وحتى لو لو أدمه كذبيحة 
even if he will be turned into ashes on the altar. وحتى لو تحول إلى إلى رماد بعد الحرق. God must raise him up. الرب يجب أن يقيم من الأموات. Because God has promised that it is through Isaac. لأن الله وعد إنه النسل سيأتي من خلال إسحاق. And that's why he said to the two young men that were waiting for him. لهالسبب إبراهيم طلب من الغلمان. Wait here. ألهم انتظروا. And I and the boy will come back to you. لهم امكثا هنا مع الحمار رين ريس ما أصعد أنا والصبي إلى هناك لنتعبد لله. After that we have worshipped. ثم نعود إليكم بعد أن نتعبد لله. And that means that Abraham believed. هذا يعني إنه الله إنه إبراهيم كان عنده إيمان. That even if he went up there. إنه حتى لو صعد إلى السماء. Even if he made an altar. حتى لو عمل إلى إلى الموقع وقدم الذبيحة. And even if he gave his own son as a sacrifice. وحتى لو أتى الابنه. He will come back. إنه ابنه سيرجع إلو. And so it happened. وهذا ما حصل. So God brought Abraham to the Mount Moriah. فنرى أن إبراهيم أتى إلى جبل المريا to test him as as a covenant partner. وكان هذا طلبة من الرب لأن الله أراد أن يمتحن إيمان وإلتزام إبراهيم للمعاهدة. But it was not the only reason. لكن هذا ليس فقط السبب الوحيد. He also took him there to teach him something and to reveal something. لكن الله كان يريد أن يظهر ويعلن شيء معين لإبراهيم. If you continue to read in Genesis 22. فعندما نتابع القراءة من إصحاح 22. From verse 5. من أعداد خمسة. It it says here. Then Abraham said to his young men, "Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship, and come again to you." فقال إبراهيم لغلاميه أمكثا هنا مع الحمار ريس ما أصعد أنا والصبي إلى هناك لنتعبد لله ثم نعود إليكما. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son, and he took his hand, the fire and the knife. So they went both of them together. فحمل إبراهيم إسحاق حطب المحرقة وأخذ هو بيده النار والسكين وذهبا كلاهما المعن. And Isaac said to his father Abraham, "My father," and he said, "Here I am, my son." He said, "Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering?" وقال إسحاق لإبراهيم أبيه يا أبي، فأجابه نعم يا بني. فسأله ها هي النار والحطب، ولكن أين خروف المحرقة؟ Abraham said, "God will provide for Himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son." So they went both of them together. فرد عليه إبراهيم إن الله يدبر لنفسه الخروف للمحرقة يبني وتبع مسيرهما معا. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. ولما بلغ الموضع الذي أشار إليه الله شيد إبراهيم مذبحا هناك ورتب الحطب ثم أوصق إسحاق ابنه ووضعه على المذبح فوق الحطب. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. ومد إبراهيم يده وتناول السكين ليذبح ابنه. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, "Here I am." فناداه ملاك الرب من السماء قائلا إبراهيم إبراهيم فأجاب نعم. He said, "Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me." فقال لا تمد يدك على الصبي ولا توقع به ضررا لأني علمت أنك تخاف الله ولم تمنع ابنك وحيدك عني. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his thorns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. وَاسْتَطَادَ الْعَبْرَهِيمُ حَوْلَهُ رَأَى خَلْفَهُ كَبْشًا قَدْ عَلِكَ بِفُرُوعِ أَشْجَارِ الْغَابَةِ فَذَهَبَ وَأَحْدَرَهُ وَأَصْعَدَهُ مُحْرَكَةً عِوَدًا عَنْ إِبْنِهِ. So Abraham. Called the name of that place, the Lord will provide, and it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. ودع إبراهيم اسم ذلك المكان يهوى يرأى ومعناه الرب يدبر 
ولذلك يقال حتى اليوم في جبل الرب الاله يرى So when it came to the final moment Abraham was not allowed to 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 give his son as a sacrifice لكن في اللحظه الاخيره قبل ما حاول ابراهيم انه يقتل ابنه يذبح ابنه الرب منعه But God had another arrangement وكان الرب دبر ترتيب اخر And so it it took them quite some time to really build this altar up on a mountain. فالظاهر انه اخذوا وقت طويل عشان يبنوا ويجهزوا هذا المذبح على الجبل. And you know Abraham he owned animals, he worked with animals. ومثل ما بتعرفوا انه ابراهيم كان يقتني المئات والالاف من الماشيه والغنم. So if he would have seen this ram caught in the thorn bush فلو هو مسبقا كان لاحظ انه كان في الكبش موجود الان في الغابه they probably would have released it before because that's what a shepherd would do كان ممكن يكون اطلق سراحه لانه هذا شيء طبيعي بيعمله اي راعي لما يشوف كبش الان في في علايكه but it appeared there exactly on the right time لكن الظاهر انه الرب اظهر كشف هذا الحيوان في اللحظه المناسبه They got their eyes on it. Okay, ولاحظوا بعد ما ابتدى يذبح يعني حاول يذبح ابنه. And you see, this has a deeper meaning. وهذا له معنى مغزى أعمق. Because now God has started to reveal to Abraham. لأنه الله ابتدى يعلن حاجات لإبراهيم. You were willing to give your son to me. بيقول له أنت كنت آبل وراضي أن تقدم ابنك ذبيحة. But God said one day will come. لكن الرب قال له سياتي يوم that i will send my son سارسل ابني and i will be willing to give him for you وساكون انا قادر ان ومستعد ان اقدم ابني ذبيحه عنك that he will die for the sins of the world لانه ابني سيموت عوضا عن خطايا كل الناس and so they got the eyes on this ram فهم شافوا ابراهيم وابنه شافوا هذا الكبش الذي علق في او في اغصان الشجر you know the bible says that before jesus was crucified بيقول يسوع الكتاب المقدس انه قبل ما صلب يسوع they put a thorn of, a, a crown of thorns upon his head وضعوا اكليل شوك على راسه in order to mock him that he would be a king وهم كانوا يستهزئوا فيه كان لانه ملك وضعوا اكليل شوك تاج من الشوك على راسه and so abraham took this ram and sacrificed it instead of his son وهنا نرى في قصه ابراهيم انه اخذ هذا الكبش وقدمه ذبيحه عوضا عن ابنه and he experienced that it, the lord truly truly provided the sacrifice واختبر انه الله هو بالفعل الذي امن الذبيحه and you know jesus was referring to this when when he came والمسيح كان يرمز الى هذه الحادثه لما كان مع تلاميذه almost uh, almost 3000 years after abraham وهذه الحادثه حدث حصلت تقريبا 3000 سنه بعد Or Or 2000 years. أو 2000 سنة بالفعل. And, and you know Jesus said in John's Gospel chapter 8. بيقول, he said Abraham saw my day and he was glad. بيقول, uh, so that means that Abraham had a revelation of the day of Jesus. فهذا يعني إنه إبراهيم بالرؤية أوكي بال بالإيمان شاهد يوم خلاص المسيح. Jesus said he didn't just hear about it. هو بيقول إنه إبراهيم ليس فقط سمع. But he saw my day. لكنه رأى يومي. And that was absolutely on this day. وهذا يعني إنه في يوم تقديم ذبيحة ابنه هو حصل شاف هذه الرؤية. Where God took him on the mountain. لما أخذ الرب على الجبل. There were were much later. اللي بنفس المكان. The 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 King Solomon would raise a temple there. بنفس المكان نفس الموقع الملك سليمان بنى الهيكل. And through the years, thousands upon thousands of sacrifices will be done there. وعلى نفس الموقع قدم آلاف وآلاف من الذبائح كمحرقات للرب. But finally, the real sacrifice would come. لكن في النهاية أتت الذبيحة الحقيقية. That God would send His own Son. أن الله أرسل ابنه الوحيد. And whosoever believe in Him. وكل من يؤمن به. 
shall not perish okay len yahlak but have everlasting life yanal al hayat al abadiyah that he would give his life and allah yuqaddim hayatu as a ransom for our sins okay kafidya li khatayana you see on the day abraham stood there fa fi al yawm alladhi waqaf ibrahim ala al jabal this hill had no houses ha fi hadak al mawqa ma kanch fi hadi al hadaba al jabal ma kanch fi ayy biyut so that means that from his view fa hada bi'ani anno min hadak al manzar he could also see the spot that later on were to be called Golgotha. في اكيد كان الموقع اللي كان اسمه الجولجوثا اللي صلب عليه المسيح. And and obviously he had a vision of what God would do in the future. بالطبع انه شاف كل المشهد مشهد الخلاص والصلب. And so he said therefore this is the place where the Lord will provide. وهذا المكان الذي يقول الرب يعد او يقدم. What is it the Lord will provide? شو كان الرب سيقدم؟ It is the sacrifice. أو يدبر الرب سيدبر ويقدم الذبيحة. That will take away التي ستتخلص the sins of the world. وتكفر عن خطية العالم. So even if Abraham went to this place probably with a great distress in his heart. رغم إنه بالطبع كان قلبه ل لإبراهيم كان حزين. He could go from there. لكن ترك. With a with a great joy, وكان ملآن بالفرح, and a great relief, وكان عنده ارتياح قوي, because now God had showed him, لأنه الرب أظهر له, something of what He meant when He said that through you and through your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. أظهر له معنى وقيمة المعاهدة التي عملها معها وهي الوعد إنه من خلال ذريته سيأتي مخلص. It would happen through that God in the future would send His Son as a Savior. وأظهر له كيف إنه في الفل مستقبل الله نفسه سيرسل ابن وحيده لكي يخلص العالم من الخطية. And that Son would give His life for us. وأنه هذا الابن سيعطي حياته صدي عنا. That we can be forgiven. لكي نحصل على الخلاص. And that we can be saved. ولكي نخلص. So this was. This was absolutely one of the highlights in Abraham's life. وهذه من إحنا بنقول مثل ذروة في حياة حياة إبراهيم. Now, if we move on, لو تابعنا, when Isaac got married, عندما تزوج يعقوب, عفوا تزوج إسحاق, and his wife finally got pregnant, وبعدين زوجته ولد يعني حبلت, it proved that she expected twins. كان في ببطنها في في توأم. And so we look in Genesis chapter 25. And I'll read from verse uh, 21. It says, And Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord granted his prayer, and Rebekah his wife conceived. وصلى إسحاق إلى الرب من أجل امرأته لأنها كانت عاقر. فاستجاب له الرب فحملت رفقة زوجته. The children struggled together within her, and she said, "If it is thus, why is this happening to me?" So she went to inquire of the Lord. وإذ تصارع الطفلان في بطنها قالت إن كان الأمر هكذا فما لي والحبل ومضت لتستفهم من الرب. And the Lord said to her, "Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you shall be divided." The one shall be stronger than the other; the older shall serve the younger. فقال لها الرب في أحشائك أمتان يتفرع منهما شعبان شعب يستقوي على شعب وكبير يستعبد لصغير. When her days to give birth were completed, behold, there were twins in her womb. وعندما اكتملت أيامها لتلد إذا في أحشائها توأمان. The first came out. Read all his body like a hairy cloak, so they called his name Esau. فخرج الأول مكسوا بالشعر وكأنه يرتدي فروة حمراء فدعوه عيسو. Afterward, his brother came out with his hand holding Esau's heel, so his name was called Jacob. Isaac was sixty years old when she bore them. ثم خرج أخوه ويده قابضة على عقب عيسو فدعوه يعقوب وكان إسحاق في الستين من عمره عندما أنجبتهما له رفقة. So in in the book of Romans chapter nine. فلو رحنا لسفر رومية إصحاح تسعة. 
the Apostle Paul explains this that this shows God's right to choose whomever he wants. الرسول بولس بيفسر الوضع بيقول انه الرب عنده الحق ان يقرر من يختار. And also that when someone is chosen or called by God وعندما شخص معين الرب يختاره it is from the mother's womb. هو يختاره من احشائه عندما يكون في في احشاء امه قبل so, الولاده. So that it shall be proved that it doesn't depend on anything we have done. وهذا يعني انه هذا لا يعتمد على اي شيء نحن نعمله كافراد كاشخاص. But it rather is God's right to choose whoever he لكن wants. لكن الرب عنده الحق ان يختار الناس قبل الولاده. And so we see here that there was a word spoken before they were born. فهذا يعني انه كان هناك كلمه اطلقت او تنبأت قبل ولاده الولد. That the younger وهذا يعني انه الابن الاصغر would, would be the mightier هو الذي سيكون الاقوى and that the older actually should serve the younger وان الكبير سيستعبد للصغير so this this was proclaimed before they were born وهذا شيء الرب اعلنه قبل ولاده الطفلين so Jacob is probably one of the most misunderstood characters in the Bible. شخصية يعقوب هي أحد الشخصيات الغامضة في الكتاب المقدس. It seems that wherever you go in the world, الظاهر إنه مهما في أي مكان ذهبت إلو في العالم. You hear people say that Jacob he was a betrayer. الناس بتقول عن بتتهم يعقوب بتقول هو الخائن. But the question is, is this really true? الخائن أو الغشاش لكن هل هذا صحيح? You know the Bible shows that uh, when Rebecca, their mother, was pregnant. لكن الرب يظهر إنه حتى في أحشاء أمه ربكة رفقة لما كانت بعدها حامل. She felt that there was a lot of activity in her womb. شعرت إنه الطفلين في بطنها في أحشاء كانوا عم بيتصارعوا. And when she asked the Lord, وعندما ذهبت لتستفسر من الرب, he said there are two peoples there. الرب قالها هناك شعبين في في داخلك. And the older shall serve the younger. والكبير سيعبد سيستعبد للصغير. We we'll look here into Genesis chapter 25. فلو رحنا لسفر التكوين 25. From verse 29. نبتدي القراءة من عدد 29. It says once when Jacob was cooking stew, Esau came in from the field and he was exhausted. بيقول وذات مرة عاد عيسو من الحقر مرهقا فوجد يعقوب قد طبخ طعاما. And Esau said to Jacob, Let me eat some of that red stew, for I am exhausted. Therefore his name was called Adam. Okay. فقال عيسو ليعقوب: أطعمني من هذا الطبيخ الأحمر لأنني جائع جدا. لهذا دعى عيسو بأدوم. Jacob said, uh, uh, Sell me your birthright now. فقال يعقوب بعني اولا امتيازك بامتيازات بكوريتك Esau said I am about to die or what use is a birthright to me فقال عيسو انا لابد مائت فاي نفع لي من بكوريتي Jacob said swear to me now so he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. فأجابه يعقوب احلف لي أولا فحلف له وباع امتيازات بكوريته ليعقوب. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. عند إذن أعطى يعقوب عيسو خبزا وطبيخ عدس فأكل وشرب ثم قام ومضى في سبيله وهكذا احتقر عيسو امتيازات البكورية. So what we see here is that that Jacob make, made an open offer to Esau. هنا نرى أنه يعقوب عمل مثل اتفاقية أو عرض على عيسو. He could have said. Uh, are you are you crazy? Should I sell my birthright? يعني ممكن كان عيسو يقول له لأخو يعقوب هل أنت مجنون؟ أنا مش حبيعك بكوريتي. But the fact is that the Bible says here that he was ready to sell it for just to feed his stomach for the moment. لكن الكتاب المقدس بيذكر إنه العيسو كان هل أدى مستهزئ ببكوريته وكان مستعد إنه يبيعها مقابل مقابل يتخلى عنها مقابل بس طبخة واحدة. And he gave 
Jacob his oath for about this transaction. وأعطى الوعد، أوكي، وحلف يعني حلف وأعطى الوعد إنه سيبيعوا امتيازات البكرية. And so Jacob fulfilled his part and were feeding him. ولها السبب يعقوب التزم بالاتفاقية وأعطى الطبيخ. And there is no deception in this. وما فيش هون أي نوع من الغش يعني ولا الخداع. As I said, Jacob gave him an open offer. مثل ما بتشوفوا كان في عرض وطلب. He could have refused it. كان ممكن إنه عيسو يرفض. But he didn't. لكن عيسو ما رفض. He actually sold his birthright. لكن عيسو باع بكوريته. And everyone understands that from this point the birthright truly belongs to Jacob. والكل يعرف إنه امتيازات البكورية من هذاك الوقت أصبحت ملك ليعقوب. Then much later on. وفي وقت لاحق. Isaac started to think that he would die. إسحاق افتكر إنه هو أتى الوقت إنه لازم يلاقي رب ويموت. And he thought that he must bless his firstborn before he died. وإسحاق الوالد طلب إنه يبارك أولاده. You see, this blessing was more to think of as an inheritance. والبركة هذه إنه ممكن إن نفتكر فيها اليوم ك ك ورث يعني إرث يعطي لأولاده. It was the blessing of Abraham. And the, and the promise of Abraham that would be passed on to the next generation. وهي إسحاق كان يريد أن ينقل البركة الله أعطاها لإبراهيم يريد أن ينقلها إلى أولاده. So he called for Esau his firstborn. فهو طلب من عيسو ابن البكر. And he said, "Go out and hunt up something and and prepare a nice dinner for me, and I bless you before I die." إسحاق طلب من عيسو اذهب إلى الحقل وشوف يعني أقتل الحيوان وعمل لي وليمة وأنا أريد أن أباركك. And you see, the point is that if Esau had been an honest man. الواقع أنه لو كان عيسو هو كان شخص يعني أمين he now should have said كان لازم يقول well actually I have sold my birthright to my brother Jacob it is, it is him you should bless كان لازم يخبر أبوه يقول له أنا بالفعل أنا بعت امتيازات بكوريتي إلى أخوي يعقوب لازم تبارك يعقوب مش, مش تباركني أنا but now Esau started to play dishonest. لكن هنا عيسو هو الشخص اللي غشاش. He thought he would have the blessing anyhow. وهو افتكر إنه حيحصل على البركة في أي حال يعني. And so he got ready to prepare this dinner for his father. فذهب لكي يحضر يعد الوليمة. At the same time, Rebecca, their mother, have heard overheard this conversation. لكن بنفس الوقت أمه اللي هي اسمها رفقة هي سمعت بالحديث هذا. So she understood that. If 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 something is to be done, it needs to be done now. وعرفت أهمية الموقف. And so she called her son Jacob. فطلبت من ابنها يعقوب. And said that you you must dress yourself like your brother and go in and pretend to be like him so that the father will bless you. قالت له أنت لازم تتظاهر إنك أخوك عيسو تلبس مثله لأنه أبوك مستعد إنه يعطي البركة لعيسو. Because you see, this blessing was like an inheritance. Once you have given an inheritance, you have given it. يعني هذه مثل ال ال الورث أو ال الإرث يعني لما يعطي ما في يسترجع الإنسان. And at first, Jacob was scared at this thought. ويعقوب كان خايف من هذه الفكرة. He said, "Think if my father would expose me." لك لك لقلها ل لأمه تتصوري لو أبوي كشف أمري إنه أنا مش عيسو. Then he would curse me instead. هو سيلعني بدل ما ما يباركني. You know, the Bible says Isaac was almost blind at this time, so he couldn't see so well. لأنه في هذاك الوقت كان نظر يعقوب عفوا إسحاق كان خف كتير وما كان يميز بين أولاده. And then Rebecca said, "Let that curse be on me, then." وقالت له رفقة دع دع ال ال اللعنة تحل علي أنا لو حصلت. So it was really her idea. وهذه كان فكرة رفقة. And she took the full responsibility. وهي أخذت تحملت كل المسؤولية. And so it happened. وهكذا حدث. That Jacob had to dress like his brother. إنه يعقوب لبس ثياب يتظاهر كأنه عيسو. And go into his father. ودخل في محضر أبوه. And to pretend to be his brother. وتظاهر إنه أخوه. And this whole situation was simply because Esau would not play honest with him. So anyhow, Jacob got blessed. And, and obviously everything became right in that sense. 
But later on, when Esau came, لكن لما رجع عاد عيسو من الحقل, and and uh, he found out that his father said, "Who are you?" ولما أبو قال له مين أنت؟ I am Esau, your son. بيقول له أنا عيسو ابنك. But who was the person that I just blessed them? بيقول له لكن مين الشخص اللي أنا باركته من قبل شوي? And this is when Esau said. وهذه الشيء اللي قالوا عيسو. Isn't he Jacob the betrayer? قال له مش هذا هو يعقوب ال الغشاش? Now he has stolen my blessing. الشخص اللي سرق مني بكوريتي. And and you see somehow it is this version that has become the. The one that is spread all over the world. والناس هي بت بتوصل هذه الكلمة بدل ما توصل الحقيقة. What Esau said. ال بتوصل كلام عيسو. That Jacob is a betrayer. إنه عيسو هو اللي اتهم أخوه إنه هو الخائن. He has deceived me. بيقول إنه أخوه هو اللي خانه. He has taken my blessing. وهو اللي أخذ البكورية مني. When the truth was that it was Esau who willfully sold his birthright. لكن الحقيقة هي إنه عيسى هو الذي باع بكوريته بكل بكل إرادته. And really, Jacob had to suffer because of that. ويعقوب كان لازم إنه يعني يعني يحصل له مشاكل بسبب هذا. So Esau said that. As soon as we have buried our father, I killed my brother. فعيسو كان بخطط بيقول إنه أول ما يموت والدي أنا بد لازم أقتل أخوي. And so for a season, Jacob had to escape a way out. وهذا دع عيسو دع يعقوب إنه يهرب من أمام أخوه. But you see, as he was doing that. لكن لما هو هرب من من محضر أخوه. God came to him. إجا التقى في الرب. Just as God came to his father Isaac. مثل ما الله التقى بأبو إسحاق. And confirmed Abraham's blessing to be upon him. والله أكد الوعد، okay، والعهد مع يعقوب مرة ثانية. And that God's God's promise. وأن وعد الله would be carried on by Jacob. سيتم من خلال ذرية يعقوب. In Genesis chapter 28. لو رحنا إلى سفر التكوين صح 28. It says in verse 13. تداء من عدد 13. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring. والرب نفسه واقف فوقها يقول أنا هو الرب إله أبيك إبراهيم وإله إسحاق إن الأرض التي تركض عليها الآن أعطيها لك ولذريتك. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south, and in you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. التي ستكون كتراب الأرض وتمتد غربا وشرقا وشمالا وجنوبا وتتبارك بك وبذريتك جميع شعوب الأرض. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. ها أنا معك وأرعاك حيثما تذهب وأردك إلى هذه الأرض ولن أتركك إلى أن أفي بكل ما وعدتك به. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, "Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it." ثم أفاق يعقوب من نومه وقال حقا إن الرب في هذا الموضع وأنا لم أعلم. And he was afraid and said, "How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven." واعتراه خوف وقال ما أرهب هذا المكان ما هذا سوى بيت الله وهذا هو باب السماء. And, and so uh, Jacob, when he got married, he eventually got 12 sons. And, and you know, uh, later on, God changed Jacob's name to be Israel. Just as he had changed Abraham's name to, from Abraham to Abraham. مثل ما الرب غير كمان اسم جدو اللي هو اسمه أبرام من أبرام إلى إبراهيم. So in the Bible, in the Old Testament, when we read about Israel, it refers actually to the person Jacob. فعندما الكتاب المقدس يذكر اسم إسرائيل هو يعني كلمة يعقوب أو الشخص يعقوب. 
and his 12 sons became known as the children of Israel. And, and so, so this, is, this is what became the people. The children of Israel. And, and uh, we see here how, how God gave his promise to Abraham. How it was passed on to his, his son Isaac. And then passed on to his grandson Jacob. And it was through him. This promise was that through you and through your seed. The whole earth is going to be blessed.